One of the most exciting chapters in convex analysis and convex optimization is duality. And duality exists between convex functions. And this is what we do in this video. And we will go to towards the, the goal of introducing duality for convex optimization problems. And um, this will lead to um, the possibility that you introduce to your original optimization problem, a dual problem, um, and uh, there are various relations between those problems which we will discuss. And uh, for now, let's talk about duality between um, convex functions, and usually this is called conjugate functions. Okay, so the idea is uh, what we have previously discussed, that we can um, we can write uh, proper convex lower semi-continuous functions as the pointwise supremum of all its of, of all their affine minorants, and uh, conjugate functions are a way to formalize this concept. So let's give the definition. Um, for a function f going from our usual finite dimensional uh, in a product space uh, to the extended real line, um, the conjugate function, and we denote this by f star, and f star also maps from h to r bar, is uh, defined by, and now f, st f star of A is the supremum of inner product of A with x minus f of x um, over x in H. Okay, that's the definition. So now we, we should discuss what this means and what this uh, has to do with this aforementioned property of proper convex lower semi-continuous functions. So let's draw some um, proper convex lower semi-continuous function um, f. And um, what this means is some affine minor end here. Um, we can we can draw this one for example. And um, there is there ex there exists of there exists of course a lot of affine minor runs with the same slope. The slope um, is what we what we here call a, and for and for this one-dimensional function a is just um, just a real number, and usually this is a, a vector and element in H. And what what the, uh, what characterizes an affine minor runt is that um, if we have a x plus alpha um, as the equation of the affine minor end, it's always less or equal than um, f of x for all x. And um, the consequence for alpha for this displacement here um, on this on the on the vertical axis, so it's kind of the constant part of this of this affine minor end, is that alpha is less or equal than and now we see we have f of x minus a of x, or we can also write minus ax um, minus f of x. Okay, so this means that this 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 constant part is always less or equal than the supremum um, the, is less or equal than the infimum over all these values, or minus the supremum over the values in inside the brackets, and this means that. Um, th uh, this part here, where we have this, like a fine minor end, which is which is like the most the the closest to the graph of the function, um, this defines minus f star of a. And for example, if you have um, the the constant part here, um, then f star of zero, which is the the like the, the uh, which is 
the slope zero characterizes the constant function. And this is, um, as, you, as you see, the supremum x and h over this inner product will be zero, so only minus f of x. Or, as you also can write, minus the infimum of f of x. Okay. So this is basically um, some visualization what this uh, f star, what the value f star of a means for some slope a um, of an affine minorant. Okay. Um, first of all, we now want to discuss some some properties um, of affine minorants. Okay. Um, uh, the first property, A, is very obvious. Uh, we see that we have the supremum over some values here. So this means that if we just choose some uh, A and X arbitrarily, uh, we get that F star of A plus F of X will always be greater than the inner product between A and X. So uh, you see this immediately from the definition. So f star of a will always be greater or equal than um, this this here for, for any x. Okay. So um, this gives you property a, and this is called the young Fenchel inequality. Okay. Okay, um, now an interesting property is um, what is uh, if you have a function, or if you have two functions f and g, and one function is greater than the other for all points. So if f of x um, less or equal than g of x for all x and h, then you see that uh, whenever you replace f of f with g here, um, then f of x is always less than g of x, and minus f of x is always greater or equal than uh, g of x, and therefore the supremum uh, becomes larger. So this means that uh, then um, g star of a will be less or equal than f star of a, for all a in h. So this means uh, that this relation is, is reversed by taking the uh, conjugate function. Uh, okay. Um, the next property is, well, uh, also simple. Uh, we see that we have a supremum over some functions and uh, if we look closer, then x is, the, is a constant here. So we have a supremum over affine functions. And affine functions are always um, continuous and convex. Convexity is, in fact, satisfied with equality. So uh, this means that we have a supremum of convex and lower semi-continuous functions. And therefore, f star is always convex and lower semi-continuous. Um, but not necessarily proper. Okay. This is um, property C and um, the next property um, connects conjugate functions with the subdifferential. Um, so you might wa you may wonder uh, what happens if a is in the subdifferential of f of x. <clears throat> well, we have seen the definition that for all y in h, uh, f of y can be. Uh, S, uh, can be estimated 
uh, or can be bound from uh, below by the first order approximation with uh, uh, the slope A. Okay. And uh, now we want to we want to get some some connection with with conjugate function, and therefore we want to reorder this thing so that we can replace this for all y quantifier with the supremum over y or an infimum over y or something like that. And to see what this means, we also we also notice that we have the inner product of a of a a with y minus f of y. So it makes a lot of sense to just put this on the other side. Um, so to write a of y minus f of y um, will be less or equal than, so a of y minus f of y will be less or equal than um, ax minus f of x, okay, uh, for all y and h still. So this means that the supremum over all y is also less or equal than this thing, which does not depend on y. Okay, so supremum of this, um, and this is obviously f star of a. Um, this will be less or equal than ax minus f of x. And now if we look at this young Fenchel inequality, we see that f star of a plus f of x will always be greater or equal than um, the inner product of a with x. So the inverse relation always holds. So here we use the young Fenchel inequality. Uh, this means that f star of a, uh, since it's always greater or equal than this, will be uh, equal to ax minus f of x in this case. So um, this holds for all a and x in h. This means that whenever you have a in the subdifferential of f at x, um, this means that the young potential inequality is satisfied, okay, that's not that's not surprising, but satisfied with equality. Okay, so that's the main point. So whenever you have this relation here, uh, you can, this is equivalent to um, satisfying the young potential inequality with equality. So uh, that's something to notice. Um, uh, and the last point we will discuss in this video, not the last point uh, in general, is that um, whenever we have a function f which is proper convex and low semi-continuous, then f star, we have also already seen that it's always convex and low semi-continuous, but f star is also proper and um, the conjugate of f star is equal with f. Uh, However, do we see that? Um, we are using um, the, um, the, uh, the fact that um, f equals uh, the supremum of its affine minorans. Okay, how do we do this? So f of x is equal with the supremum over all a 
in H and alpha in R. Um, Ax plus alpha. As long as we have that uh, for all y in H, uh, Ay plus alpha, um, so the, the same of one minor one, but evaluated at y is also less or equal than f of y. And you can see that this is equal to supremum of A in H alpha in R of Ax plus alpha such that, and now we again do the same trick here, we replace this quantifier over, over y with the supremum over y. So supremum y in h, um, a y minus f of y, okay, and this is obviously equal to f star of a, and this supremum should be less or equal than sorry, minus alpha. Okay, so let's close this. Okay, and now you see that this alpha, alpha is bounded by minus f star of a. So this is bounded by um, minus f star of a. Okay, and now we only have the supremum over a in h, and therefore this is f star star of a, as you as you see here. Okay, and so we have shown this property. Now, why is f star proper? Um, the reason is, if f star is not proper, so then it either takes the value minus infinity somewhere, and you see if you, if you have one value minus infinity here, then the supremum will always be infinity. So f star takes minus infinity leads to um, f star star um, equals f const uh, would always be plus infinity and this is not this means that f is not proper so this is a contradiction to our assumption and otherwise if f star is constant uh, with value plus infinity um, then you see if you take the conjugate you always have minus infinity here, uh, no matter which real value this inner product takes. So in a, some real value minus plus infinity, and therefore this means that f star star, which equals f, is constant with value minus infinity. And this is a contradiction to the assumption that f is proper. So you see that whenever you have, whenever you have a, a, a proper function, a proper convex lower semi-continuous function, then f star will all, also be proper convex lower semi-continuous. And not only that, if you take the conjugate of the conjugate, you will get to the, to the original function. Okay, um, this is a, a nice list of properties, and we will continue uh, with some more properties and some examples in the next video.